So we've been talking a bit lately, a lot lately, and Esther's been thinking incessantly about it on her own subjects and time about the power of non-resistant thought, the power of non-resistant thought, the enormous power of non-resistant thought. I want this. I want that. I would like to have that. But no power in that. And the reason that there's no power in it is because you killed the momentum right away. Oh, lovely. But I would really like to have that. But so no momentum. So let's just say that power is momentum and that momentum is power and that power is non-resisted and momentum is non-resisted so the more you allow a thought to flow without resisting it with the contradictory thought then the more speed it picks up the more energy it attracts the more its bigness happens the more its power happens, the more the force of it happens. Are you getting the sense of what we're talking about? So if you are thinking a thought about something you really, really want, that you've been a while wanting, and your conclusion is it hasn't come yet and is too slow in coming, then when you think about this thought, you think about it with such a mix of resistance that nothing changes. It just stays in its same relationship with you. You want it, but you want it, but you've got a push-pull going on with it. So no momentum ever happens and no what feels and looks like magic to you and others ever happens because you don't allow the momentum to allow it to happen. If you have a thought about something that you don't care that much about, you're not offering much resistance to it because you're not thinking about it that much, but you're not really encouraging the momentum of it either because you're not focused upon it but this is the thing that we want you to hear even though you're hardly even thinking about it the fact that you're not offering resistant thought means it's gaining momentum so things you sort of kind of care about or sort of kind of want that you don't offer very much resistance to they get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger the momentum comes and they keep presenting themselves to you in different ways and then they get big enough that you see them we love you so much and then when you see them what do you do but <laughs> then you offer the resistant thought because you believe in the but you believe in the objectivity. You don't want to look like a crazy dreamer. You don't want to look like someone who doesn't face reality. And we want you to be someone who is fine with us if you face reality. We just wish you'd be a better selective sifter about which parts of reality you face. We don't want you to make stuff up. We don't want you to irritate people by saying things that are absolutely opposite of what they are. But we also want you to speak more about what you desire. So we'll talk about that as we are moving forward here today. How can you manage the energy of your own thoughts? How can you allow more momentum to flow? How can you allow enough momentum of what you desire to flow that your contradictory beliefs don't have enough power to really slow them down that much? If you're at the top of the hill, this is a perfect place for this analogy. Esther was knocked over the first time she saw the San Francisco Hills. She couldn't believe anybody was really driving on them. <laughs> and so we said, Esther, imagine that you're at the top of the hill and you want to give yourself a lesson in gravity and inertia. So you just get behind your car, take it out of gear, take the parking brake off and push it just a little bit. And when it's just on this level ground at the top of the hill, you'll be able to push it. You'll be able to nudge it. You'll be able to push it right over the crest of that hill. So Esther thought about what that would be like. And she realized that because of the laws of the universe, because of the laws in place about gravity and inertia, that that car would get rolling fast enough that no resistance that she could then offer could stop it. Oh, 
if she's at the top of the hill and it's just barely beginning to roll, she could step out in front of it and it bumps up against her because not much momentum is moving yet, yes? So she could stop it with her own body. We're hard to hurt at all. But if she waits until that vehicle is at the bottom of the hill, she's standing down there at the bay. Oh, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. No problem, I'll stop it. Here it comes, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. She's not going to stop that, is she? The momentum of it is going to take her over. So we want you to contemplate your power of non-resisted thought. We want you to stand at the top of the hill and let your thoughts roll in ways that are non-resisted. Now you do that about a lot of things. You do that about the things you already believe. If you want something and you believe it, then you've got non-resisted thought. That's why you keep living it. Whether you want it or not, if you believe it, there's thought that is in motion that is not being resisted by you. When you really, 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 really want something and you're not in the way of it, then it's manifesting all over the place, isn't it? But we want you to find a way, and you can do it here today if you want to play with us in this way. We want you to find a way that you can believe what your manifestations or evidence have not yet proved to you. We want you to believe in your extreme ability to attract wealth and prosperity into your experience. We want you to believe in solid relationships that feel good all day, every day. We want you to believe in a physical body that feels good, that's vital and alive and regenerating. We want you to believe in the things that feel good to you. We want you to believe in the things that you want, not just the things that you've already got. You don't even, we love you so much, you don't even do a good job of believing in what other people have received. You just make stuff up. Well, they got it because... <laughs> Look at that. Look at that wonderful life that that person is living, but they inherited it. And so this particular game, Luke asked for the game and he said, if you could only have one wish. And then right away he said, and you don't get to wish for infinite wishes. <laughs> He's played with other adults before. <laughs> What's your one wish? And I went around the table and Luke said, I want things to be equal. And everyone went, oh. <laughs> and Esther said, they already are. Eh, nobody wants to buy that. Because it doesn't look equal. And Esther knew it wasn't the time to explain that source energy is aware of everyone equally. Lazy, lazy. <laughs> They struggled not one bit. <laughs> they don't deserve it. And we say, ah, they deserve it. Esther had the most wonderful experience with her family the other night around a table. They play games every now and again. If you were on a desert island, what would you bring? What's the one thing that you would bring? Such a fun game. Makes you want to hang out with a lot of people that bring different things. <laughs> Which is kind of what your plan was when you decided to come into this environment. You need to hang out with a lot of people that bring a lot of different things. And as you play with each other collectively, you have a lot to choose from. You benefit each other. And flowing to everyone. And that the abundance is raining down. And that the factor is the letting it in factor. The believing factor. The allowing factor. But here's this young kid already in his young life he's decided that things aren't equal because he sees people having different results and so his assumption is it's in the offering factor if things aren't equal then there must be something wrong with whoever is dishing out the stuff they must be mixed up they are unfairly offering the abundance to the universe they're offering it over there and not over there and they're offering it over there and not over there because some people are sick and some people are well and some people are happy and some people are sad and some people are prosperous and some people aren't in other words there's all kinds of injustice that this very young person is witnessing as he looks around the world and his logical conclusion is it's not equal it's not equal because the manifestations are so varied. It is not equal. And Esther wanted to have a hundred hours that she could just sit and softly explain the equality of the law of attraction.
the fairness of it, the offering of it to everyone. And Esther knows that it doesn't seem equal if you're in an environment where people are optimistic and so you just pick that habit up as compared to somebody who's in an environment where people are very pessimistic and you pick that up. Esther gets it that different people are having different exposure to life. But she wants so much for everyone to understand that there is this power of the universe that is available to everyone. And it's a power that as you pay attention to how you feel, you can feel you're in this moment allowance and utilization of it, or you can feel your pinching offiness of it. You can feel it. And so all day, every day, Esther and those like her, you guys, are having exposure to life that's letting you know. When something comes into your experience, notice the vibrational quality of it. And by that we mean, pay attention to the way that you've been feeling about that. There are two ways to know what you're creating in your experience. Two ways. One is, wait till it manifests, and then you look at it and say, yeah, that's about right. Or, feel it before it manifests, and then decide whether to encourage the feeling further or whether to choose something that feels differently. Because there is a momentum in every thought and the things that you are thinking about are coming to you, whether you want them or not. You are powerful creators. You just have an abundance and a non-physical energy and a well-being stream and source energy who has been here and been here and been here who is being here and being here and being here who is on your side who is promoting the things that you care about but this law of attraction is an across the board very even deal where you get what you think about whether you want it or not but you don't get what you think about whether you want it or not without knowing the direction of it in other words, you can tell by the way you feel because your inner being is source energy and thinking about the things that you are thinking about and has a very clear perspective. When you say you want something, your inner being thinks, yes, yes, absolutely yes. And when you think I want that and then you are thinking, but now there's a difference between your yes thought from your inner being's point of view and your but thought from your point of view and that's what equals the contradiction in energy which is the reason that you feel the way you feel so if you will just make a decision that you care about how you feel Esther had an experience lately where she made a decision about something let someone in her life up close pretty good felt weird right from the beginning and instead of following her guidance, she overrode her guidance by wanting to give that person the benefit of the doubt. Because that's what good humans do. And then it got bigger and 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 bigger. And then she said, I knew it then, 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 I knew it then. I really know it now. I really, really, really know it now. I really, really, really know it now. And we don't want any of you to beat up on that. We just want you to start paying attention to what you knew and how it turned out. How you felt and how it turned out. We want you to start guiding yourself in the direction of what you want. Not controlling others. Controlling your own vibration and therefore controlling your own impulses. You are under the influence of source energy or something else in every moment of every day. And when you are under the influence of source energy, you feel clear-minded and sure-footed. And when you're under the influence of something else, oh, there's impulse. In other words, we get it that you might feel a desire to help out. We get it that you might be inspired by something other than source energy. Because every thought that's ever been thought still exists. And the law of attraction has gathered those thoughts into rivers and streams and currents that you can step into and have a pretty good ride on. We get it. We just want you to be more selfish and therefore more aware of the vibrational variance, the possible vibrational variance, the probable vibrational variance, the usual vibrational variance between what your inner being is thinking about whatever you're thinking about and the way you're thinking about it. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.